The big news in Bengal this week was, of course, the accident that uh, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee suffered. Uh, at this point in time, we will call it an accident. Uh, there have been allegations that it was not an accident, but it was an orchestrated attack. Um, we have no evidence that shows that it's an attack. Uh, but this is an allegation at this point in time. It is being investigated by various agencies. Uh, will this affect the outcome of the election? I don't think this will affect the outcome of the election. Uh, will this result in some sympathy for her, especially if she she's hurt in the leg and she's going to go around in a wheelchair? It might, but I still think that uh, there are far more fundamental factors in uh, West Bengal. And usually, people have a very clear idea of who they are going to vote for a few months before an election. It's not something that gets swayed in the course of an election. So, I, I just think that this is one of those incidents that has happened, also happened because the atmosphere was supercharged. Um, and it's quite likely, again, you know, th this is in the realm of uh, hypothesis, it, it, it's not factual, uh, but it's quite likely that at the attack happened to an opposition politician, say someone from the CPIM, someone from the BJP, of course, someone from the Congress, they might have still been this whole thing of, oh, it's an attack, right? Uh, because the atmosphere in Bengal at this point in time is supercharged. Uh, you have very uh, two very strong forces, uh, which is the BJP and the TMC. Uh, you have a force that has lost its power, but still has some very strong and very zealous supporters, which is the left parties. Uh, the Congress is probably the weakest among these four constituents. So it is an election that is... Um, high stakes, it's an election that's high emotion, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an election where there is uh, a lot of personal pride at stake uh, because in Nandigram, where Mamata Banerjee is contesting, uh, she's going up against her one-time uh, one time protege, uh, Shuvendu Adhikari, who's moved to uh, the BJP. The Shuvendu Mamata Banerjee contest in Nandigram is actually emblematic of a larger contest that's happening. And, and to really understand this larger contest, you'll have to look at where the fight is happening. The fight is happening in Nandigram. Nandigram is in South Bengal. And South Bengal is the most important part of Bengal as far as the assembly elections are concerned. It is not quite as important for the parliamentary elections. In the 2019 parliamentary elections, the BJP did exceedingly well. It won 18 of the 42, states, uh, 42 seats in the state. Uh, but most of these wins were not in South Bengal. But in South Bengal, you have around 160 constituencies which are there in South Bengal. And, and this is where the elections are going to be decided. And the fact that the BJP has convinced Shuvendu Adhikari, who is a strong, powerful force in South Bengal, to move is clearly an advantage for them. In, in his absence, it would have been a sweep for the TMC. Uh, but Mamta herself uh, has got a lot of sway in this part of West Bengal. And, and it, it, it's really going to be a close fight. But you also have to look at one very, very fundamental thing about this election. People within West Bengal have a certain view of this election. For them, it is not being fought on uh, the pro-BJP, anti-BJP perspective that typically comes in when this election is being covered by anyone outside West Bengal. So for many people in Delhi and Bombay and other parts of the country, they see this as a strong regional uh, leader, a strong local chief minister standing up against the might of the BJP. And, and uh, whether you support the BJP or whether you support Mamta is really a function of whether you're pro-BJP or pro-Modi or anti-BJP and anti-Modi. Whereas in West Bengal, there are fundamental factors. Uh, and what are these factors? These factors have to do with everything that people around this country are worried about. It, it's got to do with basic stuff like housing. It's got to do with things like jobs. It's got to do with things like power and water and industrialization and economy. And um, in 10 years of her rule, has Mamta Banerjee really been able to deliver on the promises that she's made for West Bengal? Because you must remember that India is now an extremely aspirational society. Young people in this country really want to get ahead. At the same time, 
poor people in this country have started rewarding governments that actually deliver on welfare promises. If you look at the Modi government's return to power in 2019, one of the main factors why it came back to power was because it actually delivered on a lot of welfare measures and then actually went out and smartly targeted those beneficiaries in its election campaign. So the question is, has Mamta delivered on those welfare measures in West Bengal? To what extent has she delivered? Is there a feeling, as the BJP is claiming, that West Bengal has been left out of central welfare measures because the chief minister is antagonistic to the central government? I don't know. But those are the key factors as far as West Bengal is concerned. There is a second level of factors which are going to play out in West Bengal also. And this is the polarization angle. There has been a very sharp polarization that has happened in this election uh, along uh, religious lines. And even if you look at the Trinamool Congress's own choice of candidates in South Bengal, they've clearly tweaked it to reflect that this polarization has happened and to try and combat it in some way. The communists were voted out of power in West Bengal after decades in power simply because they couldn't deliver on a lot of things that people wanted. It's probably the reason why we are getting two very differing narratives about this election. You get a certain narrative from an outside-in perspective, but there is also a very different narrative when you look at the internal perspective. The BJP goes into these elections in West Bengal without a chief ministerial face. This is pretty much part of the party's playbook. In most states where it is not in power and it goes into an election, it does so without naming the candidate. The party believes that it is again a sign of its own internal democracy because the chief minister is elected by the legislators after the election. We also know that uh, the central BJP clearly plays a strong role in deciding who the chief minister is going to be. Um, will it hurt their prospects in the West Bengal election because they do not have a face to take on Mamta Banerjee? To a certain extent, yes. It would have helped to have a local leader, especially because the culture is very different. Uh, it's, it's the same reason, although of course in Tamil Nadu, the BJP is contesting as an ally of the ruling AA DMK. But you need to have a strong local phase, especially in regions which have their very, very strong and different identities. Um, and both in West Bengal and in Tamil Nadu, the BJP used to have the same problem. I think in West Bengal, they've managed to overcome this handicap to a great extent. It's no longer seen as a Hindi belt party. It, it's seen as a national party and the fact that it did so well in the Lok Sabha elections clearly shows uh, that there is merit to that claim. In the South, it's still not managed to do that, especially in a state like Tamil Nadu. So, it will hurt them, but it's not going to hurt them to such an extent that I, I, I don't think it's going to be one of those things that's going to make a difference to the outcome of the election. It, it might influence the outcome marginally. West Bengal 2021 is going to be one of the most critical elections that this country will see for the next three or four years. If the BJP wins, it means the party has established itself and established itself firmly coming on the back of a good performance in the Lok Sabha in a region where it did not have a presence even a decade ago. The fact that it has done so well will clearly embolden the party to try and reach out to other areas where it is not a traditional power. If Mamta Banerjee manages to hold on, I think she would have temporarily halted the juggernaut of the BJP. Uh, she would have established that she still can win elections on her own. And at a time when there is clearly a vacuum for a national opposition to the BJP, her standing will definitely go up. Uh, clearly, you know, it's too early to talk in terms of what everyone talks about, which is a third front and things like that. But it will clearly position her as a very strong opposition leader to the BJP.